Easter is around the corner, so I wanna go over some of my favorite Easter cakes. So we're gonna start off with what I think is the most obvious Easter reference, which is an Easter bunny. I was very ambitious with this bunny cake. This is a novelty novelty cake, which I dyed the layers pink, a simple syrup them, filled the cake with vanilla buttercream, but I also filled the cake with chopped up cream eggs. And you know, normally I don't like to mess with my novelty cakes because they're scary enough. What's wrong with her? She's more of a risk taker than I am. I stacked up all my cakes to make the main body of the bunny, which is pretty much kind of like an oval. Once I did that, I also had to work on, did I make the head out of Rice Krispie? Was the head cake? Is the head cake? I seem to be a risk taker. <laughs> so, oh, ow, that was my... Okay, so now that the Lord has punished me, let's move on. <laughs> it's not impossible to make the head out of cake, but it does make it very heavy. Um, so I went with Rice Krispies. It's fun to sculpt them, but you do have to crumb coat them and ice them the same way you do cake so that they have a smooth surface. Once all my parts are ready, I cover them all in white fondant. I made the assumption that the Easter Bunny is white. I feel like every reference to the Easter Bunny is white. It's never like a brown bunny. It's bunny racism is what it is, <laughs> okay? In order to put all the parts together, dowels are essential, especially for the head. So I put a dowel through the body so that the head will stay in place. And this is where you make it come to life, because let's face it, I don't think it's a real bunny. <laughs> oh no, the real Easter Bunny is gonna come strike me. <laughs> Now I've moved on to bunny blasphemy. Like I made the bunny thighs, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I yeah, I made the bunny thighs and the paws. So um, I forgot about those parts, but they were included. And then of course a tail. And the tail I feel like was just fondant. Or did I make a cake? Oh no, I must've made a cake, wow. So to make all the facial features, I used a template and circle cutters to cut out eyes. I had to make the nose. Teal? What, what did I make out of teal? He was wearing a bow tie? I forgot, yeah, because I was making like an Easter bunny like you'd buy as a stuffed animal. Yeah. That was a nice touch. I really like that. You need to let it harden before you put it on the cake, so you really have to measure and make sure it's the right size and it's going to fit between the bunny arms because let's say I made the wrong shape and the arms were in the way, I wouldn't be able to secure it to the cake, right? And because it's hardened, you can't just press on it, it will just break. So I probably made, and we left it out, I probably made more than one bow just in case. And if you make an extra bow, it's not a waste. You can always make a simple little cake and put a bow on it. You can keep those things when you make them and they're dry. I also made the ears of the bunny out of gum paste. And then of course I covered the inside of the ears with some light pink fondant to match the belly and the nose of the Easter bunny. These Easter eggs were filmed with the horrible um, interview background. The, the corner? Movie? Yeah. <laughs> My hair was also terrible this day. Do not show them a clip. Wait, can I go get something and show you something? Now you're gonna have to show them a clip. Okay. Are you rolling? Okay, so I always wore a cake tee in all of the original episodes. <laughs> so in this video, I'm wearing a tee that says Cake Chick. And this is what that tea looks like now. <laughs> I made three giant Easter egg cakes because I have the egg-shaped pens to... Whoa! <laughs> now the Lord is taking my voice. I made three giant Easter egg cakes. I did put surprises inside all of these cakes. I don't remember what they were. <laughs> Let me be surprised. It would be a surprise for you. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. I'm, I'm not going to go back and look at what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I sandwiched them together with buttercream and the secret chamber filled with something. And then I crumb coated them all. 
iced them all, um, and then I began to cover them all. This was one of my happiest days on set, creating these cakes, because I felt such a freedom. First of all, I didn't really have to sculpt, right? The pan is the correct shape. I just had to sandwich them together properly. I decided on a color scheme, and then I decorated each cake differently, but with the same color scheme. So I think if you have egg pans, this is this is a beginner. And if it cracks, eggs crack. You know what I mean? Each cake I decorated differently, but with the same color scheme. So I did one really modern. I actually like things that are simplistic and have clean lines in my in real life, in my personal life. And so I did an egg that had pink, yellow, and purple stripes, but they were different widths. Then I did an egg where I mixed, uh, diluted some yellow food coloring, pink, food coloring and purple food coloring separately with alcohol and sponged on the paint. So this was like a really popular technique. I know when I was a kid, I wanted to sponge paint my walls. This was like really popular. Mm. I couldn't do it, so I, I did it on the egg years later. For the third egg, I painted the top portion gold. So like the top not even a quarter of the egg, one fifth of the egg, I painted the tip of it gold. And the rest of the egg, I covered in a sprinkle medley that was white, yellow, pink, and purple. On the sponge egg, I went back when the sponge paint was dry and I added some gold brush strokes. And then on the really modern egg, I poured gold on top and just let it drip down. So I remember having so much fun making these eggs. You just have to make one. You could do any color scheme, but now I'm, I really need to know what was inside. As I said, I'm gonna move on to Easter basket, which I did and we filmed, except Orhan wasn't rolling. I was rolling. I just accidentally pulled the power cable off <laughs> and then it didn't record what we rolled. Oh boy. So Easter basket is a fairly simple shape to shape. I'm talking quicker. I'm like blah, blah, blah. So it's a fairly simple shape to make. I decided to make the layers chocolate cake with colored buttercream, yellow, pink, and blue, because I love the way that looks inside chocolate cake. And then you want to carve. I'm literally rushing. <laughs> you mark it with a six inch pan, and then you want to use a knife, and you want to be careful to use the center of the blade. So you're making a lot of small cuts going all the way around on an A-line. Oh, yeah, we had like a little cool conversation about that. We did, which we lost. And if, um... <laughs> <laughs> then you can crumb coat. I crumb coated and I iced with yellow buttercream, okay? Because I wanted to do a bright color in case anything were to show between the fondant. I'm basket weaving this basket. Now basket weaving, I never would have thought I would have made a cake on this channel with basket weave, because to me that's a very traditional, old fashioned method of cake decorating, and it is normally done with buttercream. So you use a round piping tip, you pipe cords, and then you use a basket weave tip, and then you pipe those ridged, thick lines over the cords and you alternate which cord you go over until it looks like a basket. I'm gonna do that but with fondant and with colorful fondant. I clay extruded some purple fondant for the cords. I made sure to measure my cake and then lay those cords on the cake at an equal distance all the way around. And then the next thing I did was I rolled out some hot pink, yellow, and blue fondant into sheets that were all the same thickness. I used my textured rolling pin to create a ridged pattern in all these sheets and then I cut them along the lines of the ridges all to the same thickness. Now what you need to do is lay these strips on the cake. I'm leaving the cake upside down. You never want to try and cut your strips to the exact length you need because the width of the cake changes as you go up. And then line the first strip up against a cord, go over another cord, and when you get to the other cord that's where you trim. So now that the basket weave is complete, I can flip my cake right side up. And down at the bottom and the top, I wanna add a rim. So down at the bottom, I'm gonna add a very thin rim, a thin rim. <laughs> down at the bottom, I'm gonna add a thinner rim. I don't wanna say a rim, it's like a finish. A finish. A finish. I didn't say finish last time. I, so it's a good thing we're redoing this. <laughs> we should, should we do it a third time? Yeah. 
and at the top I need a thicker rim. So I clay extruded yellow and blue, twisted them together like a braid, and then you want to lay it right at the top. And you want to make sure it sort of, I don't want to say hangs off, but it covers the edge of the fondant that's on the side, but is still supported by the top of the cake. Like you don't want to have it hang off so much, it would just roll off. We need a handle. So I used a coat hanger, like a coated wire hanger, cut it, shaped it like a handle, and wrapped the entire outside with pink fondant. It wasn't tedious at all. So now I have a basket, but I need to fill it because it's Easter. Right? I had a lot of chocolate bunnies, like the hollow molded type of chocolate bunnies. I had a giant chocolate egg as well as smaller chocolate eggs. Okay, so there's one more cake though. We told a story. Yeah. So this is the story of the Easter bunny that hides eggs and then the children find the eggs and put them in their basket. Yeah. There's one more part to the story. Is it? Yeah. The peeping peep. <laughs> Not the peeping mm -hmm. Tom. I made yellow velvet cake. I didn't dye yellow vanilla cake. I made so. yellow velvet cake. And that was a risk because velvet cake is so much softer. It has a softer crumb, like a peep. Yeah, but for me to shape it was really scary. And once again, I knew I didn't want to put any boards or dowels in it, so I could just cut a big piece of peep. A piece of peep. So I layered these cakes with some yellow buttercream. The shape is technically not hard because it's not like a Lego minifigure, but it is a shape that's very recognizable. So you still have to get it right. What did I do? How did I even make a template? I made a template of an oval. Like, who am I? <laughs> when you make cakes like this, my best advice is bake as much cake as you can because like the base of it is thicker, then it gets a little more narrow, and then like the head is definitely smaller. So bake a few sizes and make sure you have enough cake. Just in case you over carve, you can also add cake back. So I filled and stacked the cakes. I carved kind of like the body. It's like, you know? It's a weird shape. I feel like the carving took me longer than I thought. And then I just crumb coated the whole thing in yellow buttercream and iced the whole thing in yellow buttercream. And this is where it gets fun because peeps are unique because they're marshmallows, but they're coated in sugar. So of course I needed to mimic that texture. I wasn't just gonna leave it as an iced cake and I wasn't gonna use fondant because that's not what it looks like either. So my cake is now fully iced and chilled. I'm going to get some yellow sanding sugar. So I made sure, oh, did I color the sugar myself? I did. I colored the sugar myself. I used, oh, I don't think I used sanding sugar. I think I used granulated sugar because the peep is bigger. So you can just use regular sugar. I dyed the sugar with some yellow color dust. And after the cake was dried, I just pressed the sugar all over the cake. If you can do this over some big basin or pan or something, because as much as you put on falls off. So you wanna make sure to keep collecting that and reusing the sugar. For the eyes of the peep, they just look like little piped on chocolate dots. And they're quite imperfect on the peep. So I tried to mimic that, but larger. I chilled the dots and then I just, I made more than I needed and then I picked up two and glued them to the front of the peep. So now the peep can watch the bunny steal its eggs and the children find them. That's the story. Happy Easter, everyone. Say hi to the Easter bunny. Enjoy your eggs and your peeps. Put them in your basket. And I will be here next week.